Janae is here. Good to see you, Ariana. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of Sabbath, Mrs. Wilson. Glad to have people here um, that I know. We're going to do that song one more time. Just acknowledging God, His rightful place above all. If you want to sing along with me, feel free. It's the same words over again. Above all powers. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man.
here, first and foremost, to praise God, to exalt Him for who He is. Just wanted to add a little song that wasn't on the program here, just a verse. Um, it's a, a special song. Earlier this week, I did a, a hymns marathon. I love hymns. I did not include this one, though. see my cousin Barbara here. I know there are others. Ethan's grandma. Hang on, stop talking so you can just enjoy the song. mother-in-law to be, my fiance's grandmother is here, um, Isabel, and she requested last week Amazing Grace. I just wanted to play that for her real quick.
so long, tired and weary, on my own. In your arms, I know that I'm home, oh God, my God. This morning, my theme is about us giving ourselves to God, giving of our time, giving of our, our lives. And uh, when we get on to our devotional later on, you'll see where I'm going with that. But um, for all of us, regardless of where we are in life, what we are doing, what God has called us to do, we owe it to our own success and to His, to His happiness anyway to surrender to him. And uh, this next song also says that in a slightly different way.
riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou my It's a journey, allowing God to be truly our vision, our ruler. And uh, I pray that it's something that you have been able to do this morning again. It's an everyday thing. And uh, happy people are being blessed. Um, definitely invite your friends um, or watch the replay. We're here to praise. We're here to enjoy some worship together that we don't get enough of live. And I really miss, miss those times. So we're doing that.
Here's another song about service. Lily of the valley, let your sweet aroma fill my life. Rose of Sharon, show me how to grow in beauty in God's sight. Fairest of 10,000, make me a reflection of your your love shine through me in the night. Leave me, Lord, I'll follow anywhere you open up the door. Let your What's wrong in me and make it right. Day stars shine down, let your love shine through me in the night. Lord, I see. your love shine through me in the night. Jesus, shine down on me. Let your love shine
He is worthy of our praise. Music has, um, for many years, it has been the majority of my spiritual connection, if I'm honest. I've often not been very good at, um, at reading the Bible regularly, but I've found the Bible, I've found God in music. to see him there and he has spoken to me there those of you who just joined on the Facebook app crashed so sorry about that got back on here as soon as I can anyway now is probably the best time to get into our devotional thought for today um, so let's do that because I have exciting things in store for you. Um, boom, boom. Hopefully that echo isn't too distracting. Um, it's nice for the singing, not quite as nice for the talking, but uh, you know how it goes. All right, so <clears throat> this is number eight. We've been doing this for two months now. And... Uh, it's quite exciting for me. I didn't know how long this would go on when I started, didn't know what it would become. Um, but it's really been a blessing for me, encouraging me to push the boundaries of my musicality, of the songs that I know, of my thinking about music. And one of those things has been um, in preparing this devotional each week. And last night, particularly, I was excited and thinking through everything we've covered in the last seven weeks. And I just wanted to do a quick review um, for you all about what we have learned, because I know not all of you had been here the whole time, or sometimes we just forget things. So, first six weeks of this um, Prelude Live service, we were answering the question, is music necessary to keep a strong spiritual immune system? Um, in other words, is music an important part of our spiritual well-being? Um, and we, we answered this many different ways. One of the first things we learned is that one out of every 78 verses in the Bible, or in average that's about once in every three chapters, um, in verse talks about music. It's a, it's a very central subject to the Bible. In addition to that, there are 185 songs with lyrics in the Bible, which coincidentally is the same number of songs that the Beatles recorded during their career. So that's an easy way to remember it. 185 songs in the Bible. Unfortunately, the Bible does, however, lose quite badly in a songwriting competition with Bill and Gloria Gaither uh, because they have written well over 700 songs. However, I think the score evens right back out when you consider that uh, the Bill and Gloria Gaither essentially stole most of their songwriting ideas from the Bible, so it's all even. Um, but anyway, a lot of music in the Bible. We read a lot of stories in addition about, um, well, that illustrates how God uses music, stories in the Bible. We learned that God uses music to conquer our enemies. We learned that he uses music to inspire revival among his people. Um, we learned music can invite the Lord's presence into our lives. Music can prepare our hearts to preach the word. It invites God's power over spiritual darkness, and it invites him to remove physical obstacles, as well as, um, in the case of Paul and Silas, um, God works in, in spiritual ways and physical ways, sorry, through music to provide for us, to enrich our lives, to guide us. 
We also learned um, that through the story of Moses' last song, that God uses music as a way to keep his words in our minds, to help us remember what he has said in his guidance. Then last week, I talked about um, a slight variation. I talked about the relationship between music and freedom from oppression and how the first and the last songs of the Bible, which are both songs of Moses, um, they both remind us of God's power to deliver those who are victims of persecution, um, as is particularly the, particularly the case right now with our African-American brothers and sisters. And I talked a little bit about the, the case of Ahmaud Aubrey and how the Bible, through music, illustrates that God will have a people who have the testimony of saying, the Lord has delivered us through whatever happened, whatever um, difficulties the enemy tried to throw at us, whether it was through those that should have been our brothers or through uh, the you know, other, other forces um, of, of spiritual darkness and principalities and powers. God will have a people that is victorious. And uh, so talked about that last week and how the relationship between music, we see these things illustrated. So today, I'm going to start a slightly new study um, by exploring the question, does the Bible give instructions for how music is to be constructed for use in the ministry? Now, for those of you who aren't musicians, you might be thinking, well, what does this have to do with me? Um, well, it has to do with you are a consumer of music ministry. And God has given instruction as to what music ministry looks like. So you can know if, if this is going to fulfill that need. Um, so obviously this does cater mostly to the musicians in the audience, but I know we have some. And um, I believe it would be relevant to each one of us. So I just want to illustrate... Um, the first characteristic, the first thing that establishes music for ministry is the music minister. The music minister is a special calling by God. And, of course, it's a dime a dozen people will say, oh, the Lord has given me this song today, or the Lord has called me to do this. And it's not just a matter of saying it. Um, through, excuse me. Throughout the Bible, we have examples of musicians. Moses and Miriam in Exodus 15. We've looked at this story already, so I won't turn there again. But after the Red Sea, God led Moses and Miriam to lead the congregation in song of praising the Lord, which is that first song of Moses we looked at last week. Moses, of course, was especially called by God. His life was preserved miraculously. His whole life was um, led by God as a prophet, as a leader, and as a musical leader. Um, Miriam also is noted in that verse to be a prophetess. It's a special calling, but it's not just those two. Deborah and Barak, not Obama. Um, Deborah and Barak are judges after the time of Joshua. Well, Deborah was a judge, a prophetess, um, who led the children of Israel. And she um, wrote a song in Judges chapter 5, I believe. Yes, Judges chapter 5, all about how God delivered Israel. Taught it to the children of Israel again so they could remember throughout their history. So that's another example. Um, David, we looked at that story already in 1 Samuel 16 about him playing for Saul. And... Before that whole thing starts, we have an example of Samuel 16, uh, verse 13, of Daniel, David being anointed by Samuel. He was especially called of God for a special purpose, and part of that was music. Then after David, uh, it, during his reign, he um, formed a consecrated group of the Levites to provide music for the temple service. And this lasted for hundreds of years afterwards. And in the beginning when I was giving examples of revival among God's people, these priests and, and these Levitical priests were always among those 
who shared music would come back. They were called back to the temple to give the music. It wasn't just anyone. They didn't just say, oh, um, who here can play a harp? Yes, you with the mustache. No, it was um, very much, there were specific people that God had ordained to do music there. And there are many examples. Joshua chapter 6, verse 4, around Jericho, that story. The priests were called to blow, blow the trumpets. Um, 1 Chronicles 16, 4 to 7. I'm trying to remember what that reference is. I have it written down. Um, let's turn there, because I know it was important. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 4 through 7. All right, verse, 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 4 starts. Then he appointed some of the Levites as ministers before the ark of the Lord to invoke, to thank, and to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Asaph was the chief, and second to him were Zechariah, Jael, Shemiramoth, sorry about the names, Jahel, Mataniah, Eliab, Beniah, Obed-Edom, and Jael, who were to play harps and lyres. Asaph was to sound the cymbals, and Beniah and Jehazael, the priests, were to blow the trumpets regularly before the Ark of the Covenant. Now, this verse is important. Um, well, let's finish here. Verse 7. Then on that day, David first appointed that thanksgiving be sung to the Lord by Asaph and his brothers. Yes, so the reason that's important is because the sons of Asaph are mentioned many times through the Bible. And it always, what I have found is in conjunction with them being appointed to sing songs to the Lord. They were generational musicians. Imagine the talent, imagine the quality of sound that they produced year after year, generation after generation of knowledge and skill being developed to give praise to the Lord. Um, so, what am I saying here? Music, sacred music for ministry is important, but it's important who is presenting it, not because music ministers are more holy or more perfect at all than anyone else. I certainly am not. But, but it's important because when God gives you a call in your life, he empowers you to do it in a special way. And uh, I think that's why he does that with music, because good music is great. I love music of, of all kinds. During the week, I do a lot of different styles of music, and we have a great time, and it is, it is a blessing, but it's not the same kind of blessing as music ministry. Think of it this way. Great music can calm us. It can make us excited. It can make us sad. It helps us to have empathy for one another, to have a shared emotional experience. Music ministry drives out demons. Music ministry causes the earth to shake through the power of God and prison chains are loosed. Music ministry can be used for God to break down literal walls, metaphorical walls, conquer cities and nations. All of this, these things can't be accomplished by good music. So, that's my thought for this morning. Hopefully that made some sense. Um, and every week, I do a little bit of things. Next week, I will have another category of things that, um, that sorry, qualify music for music ministry. Um, but before I go, I'm going to share one more song with you. And uh, pray that it's as much of a blessing as it is to you. Again, thank you so much, much of a blessing to you as it is to me, that's what I meant to say. Thank you so much for being here, thank you for spending this time with me, for putting up with my technical difficulties, um, my goofy headphones, and we do this every week. We do this during the week on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central, um, but most of all, allow this as a time to invite God's presence into your life. And uh, 
to just remind him that he is welcome with you. in darkness now in light once blind now I see once a sinner Once again, thank you so much for joining me during this time of musical praise. Pray that you'll be blessed during the um, church service that follows if you do one, or maybe you're doing one tomorrow, or maybe you just wanted to have this time of spiritual revival. Either way, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for enjoying this with me, and I will see you all next time. God bless. Bye-bye.